Welcome to our online viewers. Today is both the fourth Sunday of Advent and it is Christmas Eve. But this is still the morning, so we observe the fourth Sunday in Advent now. mercy and grace shown to all generations. We praise God's constant and never-ending love and faithfulness. We rejoice that God's promise of an anointed one, the Messiah, is about to be fulfilled. O come, O come, Emmanuel, God with us forever. The Lord be with you and also with you. And today we light the fourth candle of the Advent tree, and it's the candle of love. <coughs> As we gather around the Advent tree, we rejoice that Christmas is a time of prayer and open hearts when we sing songs of joy. Christmas is a time of worship, the moment when we pause in wonder. Christmas happens when God comes to us in love through Jesus Christ and fill us with love for all humankind. The first letter of John chapter 4 verses 9 to 11 says, God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent God's only child into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we love God, but that God loved us and send the child to be the anointing sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. And so we light the fourth candle. We light this candle to proclaim the coming of the light of God into the world. With the coming of this light is love. Such great love helps us to love God and one another. The color of this candle is purple, symbolizing the majesty of Christ who rules in power, the power of love. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you that Jesus showed your love for every person, babies and children, old people and young, sick people and those who were strong, rich people and those who were poor. Come to us as Christmas approaches and let love be born in our hearts as you were born into the world on Christmas Day. Amen. Amen. And we pray together the collect for pure 
authority. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. On the spot Sunday of Advent, let us call to mind the times we have failed to love as we should and resolve again to fulfill by God's grace His commandment to love. So let us confess together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. The psalmist declares that God's steadfast love was established forever to all generations. The evidence of that love is found in God's entry into the world in Jesus Christ, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through Him. And so know that you are forgiven. Amen. Amen. And so we pray the calling for the day together. God of Elizabeth and Mary, make our hearts leap with joy, fill our mouths with songs of praise, and make us ready to welcome the Christ to our midst, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. We now listen to the word of God. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, beginning at verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings to you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is the gospel of Christ. We have arrived at Christmas Eve, and everything is probably ready for the great festivities tomorrow. Of course, there is that small window open today for you to do or get those things you forgot. And if it comes to mind during the service, well, we probably won't notice this a surreptitious note made on your phone. Just as long as it's God who reminded you, and it is done as an expression of love for those whom God has given you. 
It's probably been hectic, but we've reached the end and now the holiday can really begin. But this is also the time for Sunday in Advent, the time we remember the love of God for us, such love that he sent his son to be with us and among us. And pivotal to this was Mary, and through Mary, Jesus is born, and we remember her especially today. At this point in the story, Joseph and Mary would have been on the road for a few days. Google Maps says that to walk from Nazareth to Bethlehem takes one day and ten hours, shortest route. That probably means 34 hours. Then with luggage and possibly a donkey and a heavily pregnant woman, that would probably mean four to five days, if not more, depending on where they stopped, the state of the roads, and the need to rest both the humans and the animal. It must have been hard, and towards the end, perhaps early labor was beginning to show itself, so there would have been fear in the mix too. In Bethlehem, they were equally alone. There was obviously no family who would have hosted them. They were looking for common accommodation in an inn. I wonder if at that point, Mary wondered if it was all worth it. We go back to today's Gospel reading where it all began. The angel Gabriel visits Mary and begins with, You who are highly favored. Before turning Mary's life upside down, the angel assures her that the Lord is with her. So this is a privilege because God regards her very highly and will be with her. That The Bible records that Mary was troubled. I'm sure she was, but after assuring her she had found favor with God, in other words, God liked her and trusted her and was calling her to take on another job. The angel tells her she will have a child who will be a descendant of David and will rule over the people of Israel forever. Mary knew she hadn't slept with any man, so obviously she wanted to know how this would happen. She would become pregnant by the Holy Spirit, the angel says. And the angel gives her proof. Elizabeth, Mary's cousin, who had never been able to have a child, was six months pregnant at the time, as had been promised by the visitation to Zechariah, Elizabeth's husband earlier. Mary accepts what she's been asked to do as the Lord's servant and prepares herself so the Lord's word would be fulfilled. Just quickly, let's refer back to our Old Testament reading for today. In it, God has told David that he's not to build a temple, but one of his sons will do so. Instead, God will give David peace, a place for him and his people to live, and he would make David's name great. He also promises his family will be kings of the people of Israel forever. He ends by saying, your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. We all know the subsequent history of Israel, how through their disobedience, God allowed the Babylonians to conquer them and take them into exile. And they returned by the good graces of the Persian king and re-established themselves in their homeland and rebuilt the temple. And since then, their land was conquered by the Greeks, then the Romans, and there's been no sign of a king descended from David ever since. The Jewish people are looking for their Messiah, who will be a descendant of David, of the house of Judah, and they're awaiting this Messiah to this day. But the angel told Mary that the baby she would be carrying would be the son of the Most High, and that God would give him the throne of his father David, in other words, God is sending his Messiah, but not as a conquering king, as a baby, to a girl not even finally married to a man who himself was a descendant of David. We can be grateful that Mary was a faithful Jewish girl who put her faith absolutely in God and agreed to give herself over to this. And God was with her. God persuaded Joseph, another good faithful Jew, that in his dream he was to take Mary and bring up the child as a good fatherhood. So Mary was spared painful divorce. 
Mary is then three months with Elizabeth, not only so that these two women, who were similarly called by God, could love and support each other and give praise to God together, but possibly a side effect would have been Mary would avoid the judgment of her community and the stoning to death, which was the law for any woman falling pregnant by a man not her husband. Her pretty things would ultimately settle down. Similarly, the birth took place in Bethlehem, which would not only fulfill scripture that the Messiah was to be born there, but it would also protect the young mother and her baby from any further negative censure from the community. And if you remember, Jesus was not accepted in Nazareth later when he came back to preach. That was when he said, a prophet is not without honor save in his own country. Nazareth was like that apparently. It was in Bethlehem that the shepherds came to worship him and possibly they were still there when the wise men came to work. And with the anger and paranoid jealousy of Herod and the decree demanding all boy babies in Bethlehem were to be killed, Joseph escaped after being warned in a dream and took the family to Egypt. They only returned to Nazareth when Jesus was a boy, and by then the little family would be established and they could settle down and live a normal life. So what can we learn from today's gospel? Firstly, we can trust that God's word is reliable. What God says, God will do, and what God says God will do, God does. However, how God's will is carried out is entirely up to God. The Messiah is coming to earth as a baby is not what is expected. And that Messiah was never a soldier as David was, nor a powerful ruler as Solomon was. His life doesn't make any sense for any expectation of a conquering ruler. Instead, we get a crucified and a risen Saviour and the Kingdom of Heaven. Secondly, faith in God often means going in blindly. History abounds of people who saw a need, but the authorities didn't allow it. They either had to wait or they had to do things differently. Even our church history alone shows this. Martin Luther, an Augustinian monk who wanted to reform the church, ended up breaking away from it chewing the wood practices of an unrealistic theology, translating the Bible into the language of his people, and marrying an ex-nun, hence starting the tradition of clergy families and Protestant worship. John Wesley, who was an Anglican priest, whose preaching largely headed Britain away from a revolution similar to that of the French, and went a long way towards combating the problems of working class alcoholism, had to preach outside the church. He was not accepted into Anglican pulpits, and his fellows, followers established Methodism and new denomination. William Booth, whose passion for the poor found no response in the Methodist church, saw he had to leave, and he founded the Salvation Army, which still does sterling work. Among the lowest echelons of society, which is where they still work today, God's will was always done, but not always in a straightforward or obvious way. Thirdly, God will not call us without some form of assurance. The angel spoke to Mary about Elizabeth, and when the two met, Elizabeth's baby jumped in her womb, thus affirming the nature of Mary's pregnancy once more. Any calling we have will be vindicated somehow. We will then go forward assured that God is with us. So where is God leading us, his body, in the year that lies ahead? Has God spoken to us? Is God trying to speak to us, but we are too afraid of what the message is? Surely in our rather battered country, in the struggling and ineffective Christian denominations, God must want to do something. How are we listening and what are we hearing? Let us kneel before the manger this Christmas, and truly adore our Lord and Saviour, and let the small message of hope and restoration that he is putting in our hearts is heard by us all. We are God's church, even if it is struggling to find its way in a new and different world. We are in God's country, although no one needs to be told about the huge, almost intractable issues we are facing. Above all, we are in God's world, 
It is not by our littleness and narrow point of view, our fear and anxiety and our hopelessness stop God from working within it. The young Mary had faith and she carried it through to the end. Let us have faith too. And who knows what God will do. Amen. Let us declare our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we approach the celebration of the birth of our Savior, we come before you now with joyful hearts, trusting that you will hear and answer our prayers on behalf of the Church, the world, and all people according to their need. Through your angel Gabriel, you brought a message of peace and joy to Mary. Give to the world the peace and joy of your salvation. We pray for many places today where there is violence and unrest, that those in authority may strive for peace and prosperity for all. May your rule of justice and peace be established across the earth as nations resolve their conflicts and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you called Mary to be the mother of your son. Have mercy on all who wait for your redemption. We pray for the church across the world, especially for just and well-being the Archbishop of Canterbury, and all who lead with him. In this country, we remember our own Archbishop Tabo, our diocesan Bishop Steve, and all clergy and ministers. May your hand be upon them to guide and uphold them as they point the way to the manger this Christmas. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Father, by consent of your handmaid and the power of the Holy Spirit, your word came to dwell among us. Open our hearts to be willing to receive Christ as Mary received him 2,000 years ago. We pray for all who attend our services this Advent and Christmas season that your love may come down upon us and that we know the joy of responding to the loving invitation of your call. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, you look with compassion on the lowly and fill the hungry with good things. We pray for our local community, for those in hardship at this time of the year, for all who are struggling this Christmas, for those who will be alone, we ask that through loving actions, they may be aware of your unconditional love for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
in these days of Christmas, we pray for families that they be blessed in their coming together at various festive gatherings. We pray that all of us will try to ensure that the Christ child of Bethlehem will be central to our celebrations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, bless us and those we love. We pray particularly for the sick and for all who are awaiting operations, going through treatment in hospital or struggling with their mental Give peace and patience to those who care for a loved one, coping with their demands and needs. May your love sustain them all through difficult times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all comfort, while we know Christmas is a time for expressions of love and joy, it is also a time when we naturally remember those we have lost. Come for those who have recently lost loved ones, those mourning empty seats at a holiday table. May you draw them, them near as, as you provide them your comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our Father, in this time of grace and thanksgiving, bring us closer to you in our hearts and in our homes. May the Christmas be a memorable one for all of us as we try to keep you and your message more at the center of our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now for a prayer over the offering. With joy and gratitude for all we have been given, let us offer our gifts to God. And so rejoicing God, we offer you thanks and praise for the season of anticipation, the season of Advent. And as we prepare for the birth of your Son, we share our tithes and our offerings with a joy and excitement that is common as one anticipates the birth of a new child. And so bless these gifts in your holy name. Amen. Amen.
now for the final blessing. Beloved, the wait for the Messiah is almost over and has only just begun. Go forth from the space, carry the love that transforms us in your hearts so that your lives may give birth to hope, peace, joy and love wherever you go. And the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer be with you all. Amen. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.